Today I'll be showing you a few tips and tricks of After Effects that I wish I knew as a beginner but learned too late. So without any jibber jabber, let's get on with it. <laughs> The first one is a trick on how to split long videos onto your timeline without having to drag it out. I have this one interview with a Teddy. If I wanted a specific part on to the timeline, I would have dragged it here. I would have had, had to drag this on and on and on and on and on until you found the clip. And this clip is 1 hour and 42 minutes long. Like, my fingers hurt just thinking about it. What you can do instead of this is get your video onto the project, double click it. As you can see, the whole video is just here. Drag this timeline indicator to where you want the clip to start. Press this here. Drag it to where you want it to end. Press this here. Go onto the composition, put the timeline indicator where you want the clip to start. Go on to the footage and press this here. As you can see, the, that part of the clip is on the timeline. So yeah, this was an easy way of doing that. The second tip is snapping. This usually helps when you're using 3D objects or making 3D objects. It can also uh, be used in north slide transitions. It's just, it makes things easier. Although I have an easier way of making a cube on my channel, you can click the link above to go to that. I will be using the snapping tool to make a cube this time. I have my photo here, it's enabled 3D mode. I'm going to rotate the first photo, minus 90 degrees. I'm going to use this photo to kind of make the side of the cube. Normally you would go here and you would just wing where the edge of the first photo is. What snapping does is it kind of, well, it does exactly what it says it does. It snaps the photo into place. There are certain points which the software identifies and it snaps back into place right there. The option for snapping should be right above your display area. Just click this checkbox. And now, as you can see, it snaps into place. All you have to do is drag it. Honestly, I hate to use this method to make a cube because honestly, what is happening? Oh, it <laughs> you saw me struggle, okay? I'm not kidding. And yeah, your cube is done. You can change back to active camera, add a new null, parent all the layers to the null, enable the 3D mode on the null, and you can basically... You know what the problem with using snapping tool to make a cube is? The anchor point is all nuts. What do you mean? Why is it rotating like this? Please don't use this. But yeah, the effect is snapping helps. Make them away downtown. The third tip is say you've got a 3D object and you just look at it and in a project there are so many layers and it's just so frustrating. But the problem is if you pre-compose it, you enable 3D mode. It doesn't work as a 3D object anymore. Like, where did the cube go? What you can do is pre-compose all the clips and click this right here. Enable 3D mode. And as you can see, the cube is back. So yeah, that's the tip I learned from just experimenting with all the options given here. But yeah. The tip number I don't remember is use markers to mark the beats before you start editing. If you're using an audio, it's pretty obvious that you're going to have beats where the clip changes. What you want to do is use this right here to mark the beats before you start editing so it's easier for you to trim the clips. Go to your audio, double click L on your keyboard. As you can see, the waveform for the audio is here. The waveform kind of dips or rises when there is a beat drop. What you want to do is go to that part and click this here. Go to the second part, click this here, go to the third, beat drop, click here, and just 
do that for the whole clip. This makes it easier for you to trim your clips and just overall it's a very neat way to keep track of the beats. Tip number five is how to trim the timeline. Now let's say you have a timeline ready from a composition and it's long, it just goes on and on and on. But you want to view or you want to render a certain part of the edit. What you can do is go to the part where you want the view to start and press B on your keyboard. Go to the part where you want it to end and press N on your keyboard. Now it will play only the part that you have trimmed and when you render it, it's gonna render only this part. Tip number I don't remember still is how to smooth out your Twixter. If you're a TikTok editor, you know how smooth your velocity needs to be for it to gain attention. And if you use Twixter like me, sometimes Twixter just doesn't work, it's choppy as hell, and you just don't know how to fix it. Well, I've got a solution for you. Say this is the clip that you want to slow down. Go to your clip and add Twixter. I usually use Twixter Pro because it has a few features that normal Twixter doesn't. So just yeah, add Twixter Pro to your clip. Change image prep from none to contrast edge enhance, frame and tab to motion weighted blend and warping to inverse with smart blend. Manipulate the speed the way you want it to. You look at this and, well, it's not as smooth as you would like it to be. What you want to do is go to your project, identify the clip that you are using. For me, it's this one right here. Slide to the right and check the frame rate of the clip. For me, it's 24.235. Go to Twixter and uncheck this in FPS is out FPS box and change the value to that of your clip. As you can see, it's way smoother than before i don't know if it's noticeable or not but it is smoother because well i have the eye of a hawk <coughs> and yeah that's basically the tip you just make sure that the frame rate of the twixter and your clip is the same the seventh tip is auto saving guys i cannot stress enough how much you need autosave. One thing After Effects likes to do is crash. And I've been on a roll many times and I've just been editing on and on and on without saving and it just crashed and I lost hours worth of work. And I was just like, no, this cannot be happening to me. So yeah, to change the settings of autosave, go to After Effects, settings, and autosave. Mine is set to 20 minutes, wow. I need to change it. Um. So I would recommend setting it anywhere between 1 to 5 minutes so that you don't lose much work if it crashes but please, please follow this. It will save you hours worth of work. The eighth tip is how to get perfect shapes and straight lines on After Effects. If you've ever used a mask or the pen tool, you know how difficult it is to get perfect lines, perfect squares, perfect circles. It's just so frustrating. All you need to do is hold shift. That's literally all you need to do. I'm holding shift and I use the pen tool and see it's a straight line. If you want a diagonal line you just need to hold it at an angle and you'll get perfect 45 degrees. On the mask tool hold shift and you'll get a perfect square. Same goes for circle, hold shift and you'll get a perfect circle. The last tip is how to make anchor point easier. As someone who has been editing on After Effects for more than two years Anchor point still confuses me, like what does it do, what is its purpose, how do you change it, blah 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 blah. Normally if you wanted to change the anchor point, you would choose your clip, press A, and do whatever this is. And then you don't know what to do with it anymore. It's just confusing, like, okay, huh? Instead of that, what you can do is press Y on your keyboard, choose this little well anchor point and now you can literally put it anywhere you want it to so yeah that's it uh you could have learned that from shortcuts but but i just find it very helpful so yeah that's it that's all i could help you with if you have a few tips of your own that you learn you can jot them down in the comment box and feel free to comment any requests we're done